So the JCR stands for Junior Common Room, and this is basically the community of undergraduate students in college. Each college has its own JCR, but Mary's is known to be one of the friendliest and most welcoming, just because everyone's super keen to always get involved. And that's what we like to see. Um, when you arrive at Mary's as an undergraduate student, you are automatically a member of the JCR and through a one-off membership payment that goes towards the running of JCR events, activities, um, JCR societies, you are then free to get involved in as much as you want. And wow, is there a great spread at Mary's to get involved in? There's literally something for everyone. There's sports teams such as football, there's Mary's netball, darts, rowing. And the great thing about college sport is it's accessible to everyone because you can have no prior experience in the sport before joining and you can be as involved as you like. There's also lots of creative arts um, societies. So there's Foot of the Hill Theatre Company that puts on some amazing shows throughout the year. And there's the illustrious Mary's Dance that smashes it out of the park every single performance at formals and balls. And that's another thing, as a JCR member, you are able to attend balls and formals throughout the year. There's Midsummer Ball and Mary's Day, which are quite fun in Easter term, but my favourite is President's Guest Night Formal, just because it's a real celebration of Mary's and all the people that are in it. Um, obviously, this is just a brief idea about what a JCR is, but for a better idea of what Mary's JCR is about, you can visit the YouTube channel, St Mary's JCR, as well as the website. But of course, feel free to explore Mary's better through the current post of visit day posts that are being produced by our amazing Mary students. There's loads of execs, so each club, sport, society, whatever, will have an exec. So in terms of like Mary's Netball, for example, they'll have the team captains, treasurer, social sec, club captain, an old girls representative, kind of quite a similar structure to lots of other societies. And when you're kind of in second or third year, or even like first year sometimes, you can apply to be on the exec. Often you'll have to give a little speech, maybe say why you think you're a really good candidate, get voted on, and then you'll be able to help run that. Um, and there's also, as I'm sure you've heard about, a JCR exec with lots of roles in college. So. This provides like really great leadership opportunities and an opportunity to get more involved in society that you're interested in or just general college life and it's really fun and it's a really great experience. So the Billy Bee is what people call the Bill Bryson Library, which is the big university library located on the science site, literally just across the road from Mary's, I'd say max two minute walk if that. Um, it's really big, it's where you kind of go to get your intense studying done. It's got four floors, I love the top floor because it has such good views of the cathedral, it's so beautiful. Um, and it's got a really nice cafe, and also something really nice about the Billy Bee, kind of in normal times, is that um, just across the road there's a really good cafe called White Church, do lovely hot chocolates, so me and my friends would always go after studying in the library for a day, just get a hot chocolate as a little street and um, treat and revision break. It's the TLC, which stands for the Teaching and Learning Centre. That's literally directly opposite the Billy Bee, even closer to Mary's. I'd say it's not even a one minute walk away. So close. Um, and the TLC is where you might have some lectures and some seminars, but they also have like really good space to study. Again, beautiful views of the cathedral and Mary's as well. Um, and they have like really big tables on the top floor where you can like go with all your friends and study, which is really nice. And again, similar vibe, their cafe is really, really good. Can personally recommend um, the vegan millionaire shortbread, super, super yummy. And um, in normal times, their cafe will be like really busy, buzzing, lots of people like having lunch breaks with their friendship groups, kind of in between lectures and stuff. And it's just a really nice place to go for a chat and some like chilled work. At St Mary's we have three main buildings, there's Ferguson, Williamson and Tokyo. Now Ferguson is where the kind of all the main facilities are, so you've got the dining room, the library, the basement, all that stuff. And Williamson is a separate building down the steps. Tokyo is another building which is more around the corner. It's actually shared accommodation with Grey College and there's also an exchange scheme with Tokyo University in Japan. So usually <laughs> there might be Japanese students there as well, but obviously that hasn't been able to go ahead for obvious reasons. And really there isn't a massive difference between each of the buildings, although of course we have pride in our own building anyway. They all have laundry facilities, you know, pantries, although I have heard that Tokyo has kitchens, so you know there's, there's there's benefits to each building I guess. 
Uh, there's also a dedicated Take Your Rep, um, which is a part of the exec committee, but ultimately we are one big college community and the main thing to remember is that Williamson is the best. Another term that's quite common in Durham lingo is the viaduct. So it actually refers to this really, really beautiful railway bridge that the trains tend to come in on uh, before they arrive at Durham Station. However, people actually use it when they talk about the wider area around that. So if you choose to live out in second, third, fourth year, whatever, you might end up living in the viaduct because that's where loads of the houses are. There's loads and loads of streets around there. And what's great is because there's loads of houses packed in, it's all quite central. Your friends will probably be maximum five minutes walk away from you, which is really fun. And it's also really close to Tesco. Uh, we do a lot of late night snack trips for chocolate. Um, so you could recommend. <laughs> so when you've been looking around Durham, you probably heard colleges referred to as Hill Colleges or Bailey Colleges. The only difference between them is sort of where they are. So the Bailey Colleges are um, in the old part of town nearer to the cathedral. They're generally older buildings and might be a bit more traditional. The Hill Colleges are up on the hill and they are newer and some of them are self-catered. They're closer to the science buildings as well. Um, Mary's is a Hill College but it's at the bottom of the hill so we're the closest one to town and just across the road from the science buildings and the library so it's a great location. So a formative is an essay or piece of work that you do but it doesn't count towards your degree so it's quite chilled, relaxed and then a summative is kind of the same thing but the mark you get will count towards your average and overall degree classification. Um, but what's quite good about this is that you'll often do a formative before you do your summative so it'll give you a chance to practice, get some feedback before you start the kind of more serious summative ones. Um, but summatives definitely aren't something to stress about, they're usually not more than like 50% of a module and you always have like your academic advisors, tutors, lots of people you can turn to for support if you need it. So a formal is basically a fancy three course dinner that you go to with your friends and it's super cheap, it's normally seven or eight pounds and the quality of food is really good. Then there are different themes throughout the year and formals happen about two or three times a term and there'll be things like a Christmas formal, a Burns night formal and each one will have a little twist to kind of play up to the theme. Um, so at the formal you dress fancy and you have to wear a gown which is beautifully modelled by Alice. <laughs> you wear your gown to all formals as Mary is, Mary's is a gowned college. Some of the other colleges don't have gowns but at Mary's we do. You'll also wear your gown to matriculation and JCR meetings, although at JCR meetings you can wear anything you want underneath your gown. You can come in your hoodie and your tracksuit bottoms, <laughs> no one will really mind. You will get your gown when you first arrive at college during Freshers Week and they are based on how tall you are, but they always seem big on everyone, so don't worry. Another type of event we have at Mary's are balls. We usually have three balls in the year, one in each term. The first term ball is our winter ball, which is usually either snow themed or sometimes Christmas themed. I think one year we had a nutcracker theme. The second term ball is run by the arts committee and that's the masquerade ball. This in the past has had themes such as Tim Burton and myths and legends. It's always so much fun and usually masks are sold within college. So you can find one that matches your outfit. The biggest event on the Mary's calendar is Midsummer Ball, which is held after exams, so you don't have to worry about getting up to go to lectures the next day. And we stay up from six till six, and everyone goes up on Observatory Hill to watch the sun rise, and then we come down and eat a hog roast or falafel and get a survivor's picture. For each ball, there are two types of tickets you either have a meal and ENTS ticket or just an ENTS ticket. ENTS is short for entertainment, so if you get a meal and ENTS ticket, you'll get a ticket and be able to go to the three course meal. 
and then to the entertainment afterwards. If you get an ENTS ticket, you come in after the meal, but still get to enjoy all of the bands and all of the different types of entertainment that the ball committee have set up. Another term, phrase, word, whatever, that's really, really common, but I didn't know about before I arrived here is DUCFS. So that stands for Durham University Charity Fashion Show. It's the biggest student fundraiser in the country. Durham's really, really proud of it. Last year, they managed to raise £171,000 for charity, which is absolutely insane. Um, and it's a really, really fun event. It's over three nights. You go to the charity fashion show, you watch all these models, you learn about the charity, you have a really good time with your friends. Um, and they do loads and loads of little fundraising events up to that. Um, and also, Durham really loves its charity fashion shows. Each college kind of tends to have one. Um, which is really, really great fun. Um, it's a really fun night, could really recommend. Mary's explicitly doesn't have one, but what we do have is the Revival, which isn't really linked to the college, but it's just run by Mary's students. And um, last year, I think they raised £11,000, which is, again, absolutely insane. It was over one night, such a great time. Loads of Mary's students just relaxing after a day of work and having fun with their friends. So yeah, charity fashion shows, very common in Durham.